Hello, I'd like to talk about a principle, and uh, by the way, I've got a link below for a uh, translation I did, well, 61 ancient Greek translations uh, from the works of uh, Plotinus. Um, ancient Greek is tough enough, but when you're talking about uh, ancient Greek uh, monistic uh, shorthand, it's like uh, translating, <laughs> it's like translating uh, English code into... Uh, God knows what. I mean, it's it's very difficult stuff. Um, so check out the article below. It's 26 pages, but uh, you don't have to read all the translated passages. Um, but uh, you know, just the first few articles if you want to discover one of the ancient secrets that um, I unraveled, and uh, it's an ancient Greek uh, term called the aoristos dias, and it's direct connection with the golden section, the golden ratio. The ancient Greeks were incredibly interested with the aorismos and the anake, or the tolma of, uh, of uh, monism. Well, here's an irreducible fact. There's absolutely nothing in the universe, from most simplex to most complex, that doesn't have at least one attribute. The indivisible principle of uh, uh, incommensurability. And one analogy is a magnet, for example. You could take a magnet, and if you're able to slice it like a hunk of salami into a million, billion, trillion slices, each little slice would have a quote-unquote north pole and a south pole. In other words, there is no pole that can be cut out of any magnet. This is a hardcore scientific fact. This is a principle of point nonspecific incommensurability. This indefiniteness, which is really not a very good word, word is a is a point of uh, comprehension that the Greeks, the ancient Greek Platonists, Numenius, Demetius, Plato, Plotinus, uh, Proclus, Numenius were extremely interested in. What was it? What did it mean? What were its implications? And of course this is directly relational to the golden section of the golden ratio. The golden ratio is exactly that. It's a ratio, but what does that mean? We can talk about what it is and start counting beans like a bunch of brainless mathematicians, but what is the meaning of what it is in itself? And it's really very simple, but the hard thing about uh, explaining things that are very simplex is that they're not simple to explain. Getting bit by mosquitoes here. The indivisibility of the most simplex of principles from what they are in attribution. There's no separating out light from illumination. They're both one and the same thing, so on the one hand we have one and one. The good does good. What light is is also what light does. It is an indivisible uh, plurality that is indefinite. This is why the golden section, the golden ratio, starts out as one, one, two, three, five, eight, so on. It begins with one and one. But one and one are one thing only, that being the primary principle. And this eristos dias, uh, what it means, its context, uh, its exact implications, I translated from the works of Plotinus, one of the most intelligent people who ever lived, there have been five translations of Plotinus, and every one of them has been absolutely piss poor. And no one has ever been able to get to the root of what the term actually means or its implications, but I have. I explain it, and so download the article below. It's completely free, of course. And I'll explain to you one of the ancient mysteries of uh, the Greek Platonists, the Pythagoreans specifically, and the ancient Egyptians. The indivisible uh, principle and attribute which are one and the same thing only and this is the root of the golden section of the golden ratio which begins with one and one it's the indivisible principle of one in principle is also what one does that doesn't mean that there is a principle and uh, activity no it means that they're an inseparable indivisible uh, principle I said there's nothing in the universe that does not have at least one attribute. Water is wet, light shines, the good does good, however you want to apply that. And uh, this is the context of the Eoristos Dias. And there is no correct English translation. There's some ancient Greek terms which are absolutely without translation. Like the term nous, for example, is an untranslatable term. And the term logos depending on the context of its uh, usage, it uh, does not mean word. The logos literally means a ratio, proportion. It does not mean word. 
it means word only in an absolutist reductionistic sense but uh, anyway check out the article below and uh, you will find out the hidden secrets that the ancient Greek Platonists and Neoplatonists were able to comprehend about the Aoristos Dias or specifically the one in principle and the one in attribute which are an indivisible one principle and attribute light and illumination one and the same thing only divided up in as so far as our human perceptual comprehension of how something is versus what something does but they're one and the same thing they're not divisible only in reification through inferior human mental machinations that we differentiate out something in principle versus something in attribute both are one and the exact same thing one and one this is the basis of the golden ratio this is the basis of the Aoristos Dias this is the basis of all monism and all ancient Greek hardcore and I do mean hardcore Pythagorean and Platonic thinking and monistic metaphysics and monism okay check the link below the articles free hope you enjoy it okay bye